everyone, my name's Silver, welcome back to the channel, and today guys, I have a Magic the Gathering video for you. So this goes outside my normal Vanguard content, <coughs> but at the same time guys, I really don't keep it too much of a secret that I play the uh, Magic the Gathering Arena. It's currently in beta, it's a pretty fun game overall, and I wanted to show my 9 out of 10 wins deck. Um, let me give you guys some perspective, uh, save of what this deck actually does so right now i've been playing the quick construct deck which means you choose one of your decks and you bring it in and i have currently four wins and a single loss i just achieved that loss but this deck i've literally brought into keep hitting profile that's such a new thing i keep i bring it into free play i brought it into competitive like as you see right now i'm using another pre-constructed deck to see what cards i had and test it out but quick construct it was just i had it i've gone four wins one loss in total and i'm pretty sure over the next couple one day or so i play i'll be able to clean up to seven wins um this deck just has so much potential in it so i wanted to go over it with you guys and show it off so if you guys want to build this in the competitive scene you might be able to i don't know there's any cards in this deck that are currently banned in standard i don't think so so yeah uh i also think i only really run one of every card in this deck so should be pretty straightforward a 60 card deck um <coughs> we're gonna start off with the zero drop which is moxie amber essentially it's a legendary artifact it taps itself at one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers i control <coughs> Pretty good card for zero drop. If I ever get this in my opening hand, I drop it right away. Just because this deck does run quite a few legendary creatures and planeswalkers. We're going to move on to the next card, which is Bloodlust. Um, as you can see on stream, he just helps give my big guys that don't have haste already haste. <coughs> um, you could probably run more than him, but I choose to run him at one just because I like playing some of the more competitive next we are on a bomb mat crate Car i'm too tired and dyslexic for this essentially this card has haste whenever it attacks exile the top card of your deck from your library face down and it has a seal pay one red discard your hand sacrifice this card put all exile cards with this effect into your owner's hand pretty good card i have made misplays with it in the past so be careful of that i run one Reck reckless rampage it deals four damage to a target creature i don't control and two damage to one of my own for a single drop fairly powerful i use this card a lot to clear out some big threats um we have we run a shock pretty self-explanatory for one it does two we run a sh a shriek prospector um, sacrifice a goblin, add one mana to my mana pool. This deck can mana ramp. <coughs> I've yet to really ever draw a hand where I needed to mull it. I always normally get anywhere from three to four mana. And even at the four mana, I tend not to mull that hand just because it just has too good of stuff in it. Um, from this prospector, we have one soul scarred mage. Every time I cast a non, every time... If your source you control deals non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put a minus one, minus one on it. And whenever I cast a non-creature spell, he gets a plus one, plus one. So he is super powerful. Especially in this deck. Um, this destroys an artifact or land or deals three damage. Pretty good for a two drop. Um, now this is where <coughs> the creatures start coming in. Uh, this has first strike when it enters the battlefield exile target permanent my uh, target egg sorcery or instant and opponent controls from the grave uh you may cast that this turn you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast for that spell if the that card would be put into the graveyard this turn exile it instead um another haste card earth shattering Essentially, when it comes into play, you target a creature with power less than or equal to it, and it can't block. And then it has the ability to come back as a zombie. We have a Skyship Raider, a legendary creature. This is one of the many legendary creatures. Essentially, when she attacks, 
you get a 2-1 red monkey token that's attacking at the end of turn you exile it or at the end of combat um we run a lightning it does three damage we run one um crop crasher uh an exert card when it's exerted uh target creature can't block uh, unfortunately, if you exert it, though, it does make it so it can't untap during your next untap step. Um, Frenzy, Scouter, Haste card, 3 drop for 3-3. Three, three. Perfect. You can literally change this with anything else of your choice if you feel like it. Um, Captain, well, this, I'm too tired to really care about names. You can see it on stream. What this card does is every time it attacks, I get an artifact treasure token would sacrifice add one mana of any color to my mana pool all that you run in this deck is red and colorless so you're just tapping for red but whenever you sacrifice a treasure it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn fight fire fight with fire um good card it is really it does get used a lot in this deck uh for three when it when you use it deal five damage i hardly ever used it for its kick cut for the kicker so um normally i don't deal 10 damage if there's a lot of threats on the field that are big i might kick it but i haven't had to use that yet and it's good for a three drop five for three um goblin chain milliter when it enters deal damage to your opponent and every creature they control another board clear this card is good you don't understand against some of the green decks and white decks i face where they have one one mana wrappers this just clears them and sets my opponent back so far. Following that up is the um, Hungry Flames. It deals 3 damage to a creature and 2 damage to a player or planeswalker. So another burn spell, just great. Um, this is essentially your... Um, oh god, it's an old red card that used to do the same thing almost. But this has a benefit. That's why I like running it. Uh, essentially, I target a creature or vehicle, I gain control, untap it, it gains haste, and I may cast a spell from hand with two or less converted mana costs. I wish this was two or less, but hey. Um, the swarm, when it enters the battlefield, it also has haste. You get two of these counters at the bottom of it, and then if you can't pay for the two, you have to sacrifice it. Although in this deck, I do have other cards that produce that, so this worm has stayed on my field for quite a while early game. Following that up, we have another legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, I put a 1-1 one, one color of Thopter on the field with flying, uh, sacrifice, an artifact, target creature can't block. It's straightforward. Squire, I may cast it from my grave or from exile. It's just a good card for three. We also run the Harvester, which... Again, is one of the cards that works well with my worm here, or Hellion. Um, produce two, pay one, and gain life link until end of turn. We run Chandra Torch Def Defiance. Um, really good skills. Uh, exile the top card of my library. I may cast it. If I don't, it deals two damage to an opponent. Plus another plus one, add two mana. Chandra deals four damage to target creature for minus four. And seven, whenever I cast a spell, I deal 5 damage because of an emblem. Uh, following up her on the list, we run the god. Um, when it attacks or blocks, unless you control one or fewer cards in hand, it can't attack or block unless you control one or two fewer cards for 3. You can discard 2 and deal damage to an opponent. I love this bird. I run it because I love it. Oh, uh, when it dies, create a 0-1 red elemental token with at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice this creature and return this card from your grave to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Very few ways to deal with this besides exile and killing the token. Um, I run a dragon. Not much to be said on that. It's a dragon. It's a good dragon. Run it. I run another dragon. It's a legendary. This dragon creates a 4-4 dragon if I kick it for 7, so the where this deck mana ramps, this is a good deck card. <coughs> um, They trample haste, 5-3. Come on, 
there, there's no reason not to run this. Probably the most expensive card in this deck. Um, reveal the top two cards of your library. For at a plus one, your opponent chooses one of them. Put this card. Put the card into your hand. Exile the other. Minus one. Take the card that was exiled prior to this. Put it to hand and minus two, so you can activate it right away. Create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature that gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. You can literally drop two, and they both are two twos, and just go from there. Um, next we run a Dino Trample Haste. Just applies pressure for five. One of my favorite cards in this deck is an Exert, where it deals four damage. Flying Haste. This deck is just super aggressive. Um, he creates three one-one red goblins. Uh, flying does three damage to target creature or planeswalker when it enters the battlefield or attacks. This shuts down Planeswalkers, but at the beginning of my draw step, I draw an additional card. Spells cost one less, and creatures I control get plus one, plus one. I've had plenty of people rage quit just because their deck relies on being in control of the game, and if their Planeswalkers can't do their things, then... Yeah, I run two, so I don't always play this card. From there, we run a couple unique lands. We run one Desert of Fever... One Memorial to the War, 19 Mountains, one Ark Ozen, um, one Gastardly Goons, one Scorched Desert, which I like because it deals damage, and we run one Void Land because it allows us to stride. And that is essentially the deck as an overall. I'm probably going to eat trash if I try this, but we're going to attempt to play a game. And if this video remains under 20 minutes, we'll see how good I am. I'm, I'm pretty bad. But I figured might as well show off the goods if I'm going to talk about the goods. You know, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> so hopefully someone will join the game here soon. Currently waiting. This goes on too much longer. I'm just going to end the video. Oh, okay, there we go. I was gonna say, I'll wait up to a minute. Now watch. Now that I've bolstered this deck, I'm gonna lose. <coughs> um, okay, so let's see. I'll keep the opening hand. It's a bad idea, but I can scry one, so if I don't get something that I need at the top, I can always um, get rid of it. I've had very little problems with this deck ever not let, giving me mana when I need it. All I need is one red to really pop my hand. I can deal creature damage or I can destroy an artifact. So I'm pretty solid out the gate. Um, he mulled. We don't want that right now. We want to land, so... We want one red mana or we're not going to be doing a lot next turn. See, look at that. I had complete and utter faith in my deck. I probably shouldn't have done what I did, but I did. And now I get rewarded for it. I hate that card, but it does help mill him a heck of a lot faster than it mills me. And there's no point of playing any of my cards for any reason. Because you're an enchantment. Yeah, we'll just go into combat and deal three damage. Yes, yeah. There's nothing he can do. Alrighty. And main entrance. Right now, we'll hold on to my hand. I hate it when it asks me to resolve spells. There's no point. I can't destroy it until. Never. His deck doesn't run any. Um, artifact destruction, which is kind of sad. If I can get one more mana on my upkeep, I can also pop my Planeswalker into existence. I feel like I've fought this guy. <laughs> Ryan.ex. Uh, uh, come on. Okay, nope, but it does allow me to play this. If he wants to counter it, he can counter it, but it does nothing to him. In combat, we will see what he does but honestly we're just gonna keep the aggro up 
Um, all attackers. And yeah, okay. So that's another three damage. He's got to figure out what he's doing with. Uh, being that it looks like he's playing blue-white, I will expect him at some point to be running the card that allows him to exile all attacking creatures and allow me to put mana down for every color. He's just not doing well right now. Don't know if it's because of lack of mana. It doesn't seem to be. I mean, we're at the same mana count. So... But... He also doesn't have an instant or sorcery right now in his graveyard. I wish this had flash. Alright, we got the fourth mana we wanted. It's gonna come in, deal him a damage. Um, can I can't deal him damage. Uh, if I had the seven, I'd actually kick that right now. No point of playing that right this second. I'd much rather play my Planeswalker and watch it get countered. Because I'm still gonna get the powerless bonus. If he counters the Planeswalker, then I can still attack with my creatures that get buffs. Honestly, this Planeswalker does nothing but give me some additional draw power. So, if he wants to counter it, go right ahead. But, this is not the scariest... Yeah, he's tapping two to counter. Please do not do that. Uh, counter... Well, now I know he only has two white, so let's just go in for an attack. Sadly, I have no way to bring him back, but he's at eight health. He's not leaving himself room for anything. And if I just continue to draw mana, I can just continue to deal damage. He plays a creature, I'm going to just blow it up. I don't think there's a lot he can do. Alright, there's another card. Huh. I should be able to... Alright. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna take his permanent from him. So that way, if he goes to cast something... If he lets this through, that is. If he goes to cast something, then I'm going to destroy it. I'm gonna counter it. But again, this is another counter card. So if he counters it, it's not gonna be the biggest loss under my belt. Okay, buddy. What are you going to do? You have another potential. Yep, I saw that counter. Um, There's nothing I can do, so we're just going to let that resolve. But again, he's tapped himself out, so I'm just going to go into combat and keep pegging him. I don't know what he plans to do from here, but sh I, I just don't know. Now he has a turn, maybe two. Like, I told you guys, this deck is super aggressive. And I have no way to destroy any of his stuff currently. I just don't know what he's doing. He's countered me. I think he's looking for a creature spell, in all honesty. That or he's just expecting to keep countering me. Um, do I have the seven yet? I have three, five, six. So close. Oh, I need eight. All right, combat. And being now he has enough mana, I'm just going to attack with this. I'll leave myself a creature. <coughs> Stall out a turn. I don't like it, but he has the white card I'm thinking of, then it, he's going to exile both of these. I'm going to get two more land. There it is, see? Uh, take action. One, come on. One, two. <coughs> Next turn, I should be able to cast that, right? Two, five, six. Uh, I need one more mana. But I saw that card. Actually, maybe I should have attacked with that, but oh well. <coughs> Even if I get the one more mana next turn, he's dead, because I can just deal him 10 instant damage. I guess he could counter it, but I'm honestly not too worried. 
He's giving me what I needed. And if he ever goes to play anything, he's not going to be able to counter. Okay, so right now he has a low counter. Co okay. I don't think he's running anything with a counter of two or less. Oh, yeah, he has counter spell. Oh, he played that at the beginning of your end step. Yeah, no, you can play that. I have no way to do anything to it. So. Sorry I'm late. Ah, you're good, bro. I'm sorry that the wielder is not going to have anything. Um, Put a non-target permanent into its owner's library. Search on the top. Sure. You need to slow down. All I need is a mana. If I draw a man. Good game. We'll pay for its kick. Submit. We're gonna deal him um ten damage. And GG. I've never really had to pay for that, but that's the deck, guys. Like I said, this deck is super aggressive, and I love it. But I hope you guys did enjoy that battle. And if you guys did, please let me know down in the comments below so I can play more of this. Until next time, guys, everyone, I've been Wolf, and I'll see you all later. Peace out.